Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're revisiting this post by President Nelson, his first post of the year. We've noted that in previous years during his presidency, the first post of the year seemed to really have to do with um, the main theme or big event of that year. And so a lot of us were uh, anticipating and looking forward to this post. We uh, looked it over and noted a few things. <coughs> I'm not going to repeat that here, but if you missed that video, it's this one right here, just three videos back, President Nelson's first post of 2024. So I'll put a link for that in the description below. But since that time, in fact, uh, Jenica and I were going for a drive after I had put this out, and then she reminded me of something that I I, I was meaning to mention when I was making the video. So uh, I wanted to share that here. And there's also a few things that some of you have pointed out, which I thought were really interesting. And so let's take a look at it. Okay. So first, uh, let's do it like this. First, I want to share what I, uh, what I meant to share the first time in the last part of his message or his post, he says, may we strive this new year, <coughs> excuse me, to marvel and rejoice at the privileges and opportunities our Father in heaven and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, provide. Um, when I first read this, this immediately made me think of his talk, uh, his main talk of the October 2022 General Conference called Overcome the World and Find Rest. Because of these two words right here, privileges and opportunities. Because in that talk, which could possibly go down as one of the most important talks in church history, in my mind, because this is the one where he he called on um, the church to be the people of the second coming. Let me just re remind you about that in case you forgot or if you're new um, or didn't realize this. Okay, October 2022. As I have stated before, the gathering of Israel is the most important work taking place on the earth today. One crucial element of this gathering is preparing a people who are able, ready, and worthy to receive the Lord when he comes again. A people who have already chosen Jesus Christ over this fallen world. A people who rejoice in their agency to live the higher, holier laws of Jesus Christ. I call upon you, my dear brothers and sisters, to become this righteous people. And this is one of those ones where you have to watch the video and watch how he says that because he takes a pause right here. And then he says, I call upon you as he smiles and he looks at the congregation as though he's not just generically talking about the church, you know, however many years uh, it'll take before Christ comes. No, the way that he delivered it is though he was talking about this group of people right now that are in the church. Okay. And it's interesting that he says here that uh, we need to be a people that have already chosen Christ over this fallen world. And the name of the talk is overcome the world and find rest. So it's like the point of the talk is to become that people that have overcome the world and who have already chosen Christ, because that's what you'll need to have done in order to um, be among those that receive him at his second coming. Okay. So <clears throat> at the beginning uh, he says something really interesting. I'm actually going to start at the very beginning. You'll notice that I have the word marvel highlighted because we're going to be talking about that because he repeated that word a number of times in his post, but I'll get to that in just a minute. He says, my dear brothers and sisters, I am grateful to greet you on this glorious Sabbath morning. Uh, you are constantly on my mind. I, I marvel at the way you spring into action whenever you see others in need. I stand amazed at the faith and testimony you demonstrate again and again. I weep over your heartaches, disappointments, and worries. Uh, I love you. I assure you that our Heavenly Father and His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, love you. They are intimately aware of your circumstances, your goodness, your needs, and your prayers for help. And again and again, I pray for you to feel their love for you. Experiencing their love is vital, as it seems that we are accosted daily 
by an onslaught of sobering news. You may have had days when you wish you could don on or you could don your pajamas, curl up in a ball, and ask someone to awaken you when the turmoil is over. Now, this is interesting because as we've gone through all of his social media posts, uh, this is something that he's essentially brought up every single year and frequently is how he wants us to realize that Christ and Heavenly Father love us individually, that they're aware of us, uh, that he, President Nelson, loves us. This has been one of his like main themes and something that he's repeated many, many, many times. And here uh, he gives an explanation. He said He says that it's vital because we're going through a time of turmoil, or I guess you could say a tribulation period right now. <laughs> It's been a very tumultuous several years, hasn't it? And it's probably because the second coming is soon. And in this very talk, he, he calls on us to be the people of the second coming. And so now uh, the part really that I wanted to share. But my dear brothers and sisters, so many wonderful things are ahead. In coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power the world has ever seen. And he puts greatest in italics and ever in italics, which put, puts an emphasis and stresses those words. And I'll say it again, uh, at least in nature and in astronomy, we have that has literally happened. We have seen the most powerful things that humanity has ever recorded with modern instruments like the supernova, which uh, produced a gamma ray burst one week after he said this, it was the largest explosion ever that we've ever seen, ever, and recorded with modern instruments. Um, the largest solar, <coughs> excuse me, the largest solar flare on another star, not our sun, but that was recorded um, last year in 2023. So there's been like a lot of things. So uh, undoubtedly, he's talking about spiritual things as well, but. Uh, there have literally been some actual most powerful things that we've ever seen in nature. Um, and then he says, between now and the time he returns, quote, with power and great glory, end quote, he will bestow countless privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful. Okay, the footnote takes you to Joseph Smith Matthew says, Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So he essentially just talked about um, <clears throat> how uh, Heavenly Father in Christ and President Nelson, they all know uh, that there are things going on right now in the world and in your life I mean, President Nelson doesn't know personally what you're going through, but he's aware generally, whereas uh, God the Father and Jesus Christ personally know what you're going through. Um, so there's an awareness that there's trouble uh, going on right now throughout the world that's affecting many people in many different ways. It's vital to understand that you are loved. And then uh, he says that between now, like during this period of turmoil and tribulation and trials and all that between now and when we see the sign of the son of man uh christ is going to bestow countless privileges blessings and miracles upon the faithful and uh probably all for different purposes and things like that um there's a little bit more insight when we go to this last general conference october 2023 elder neil l anderson's talk tithing, opening the windows of heaven. And at the end of his talk, he says, God's important. Okay. This section is called God's important work. My brothers and sisters, the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is quote unquote, out of obscurity, bringing remarkable blessings across the earth. There will be those who cheer us forward and those who do not. I have thought of the words of the wise uh, Gamaliel, who upon hearing the, of the miracles, of the Apostle Peter and John, warned the council in Jerusalem, quote, <clears throat> Let these men alone, for if this work be of men, it will come to naught. 
but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest ye be found even to fight against God. End quote. Uh, you and I are part of God's important work upon the earth. It will not come to naught, but will continue to move across the world, preparing the way for the Savior's return. I testify to the words of President Russell M. Nelson, quote, In coming days we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power the world has ever seen. Between now and the time he returns, he will bestow countless privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful, end quote. This is my witness. Jesus is the Christ. This is his holy work. He will come again. So that's the context of these uh, privileges, blessings, and miracles. A time of turmoil, tribulation, opposition, in a period of time between October 2022 and the sign of the Son of Man. That window of time, who, know, who knows how long it's going to be. Hopefully it's almost over. But in this post, he kind of uh, mentions that at the end. May we strive this new year to marvel and rejoice at the privileges and opportunities our Father in Heaven and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, provide. So it's very similar to his talk because he uses the word marvel and he <laughs> mentions privileges and opportunities. Okay. So that's uh, one thing that I wanted to share in the last video. Now, um, I got a comment from uh, Sher Cheryl Dinell 5095 uh, and she says, When I saw the post and the picture with it, I noticed the light and the dark on opposite sides of the frame. While the post talked about miracles, I thought of signs that would confirm to the saints where we are in relation to the second coming of our Lord. Can we take the good with the bad? Those dark clouds seem imminent. So you look at this picture and yeah, there, <laughs> there's a dark side. There's a light side. You may think it's silly to think that he would have chosen a picture like this. And it could be that he just wanted <coughs> a picture just of Machu Picchu um, for whatever reason. But haven't you at some times... Or haven't you sometimes when you've posted something on Facebook or Instagram or wh wherever you've, you've like wanted something that just like really, you know, sends a message, you know, and there might be things in the background that you feel are part of that message. You know, maybe he, ha he has other pictures at Machu Picchu. Maybe he wanted this one uh, to kind of put that in your mind because one side looks kind of dark and stormy in a way probably not storm. I don't know. Those are kind of dark clouds. The other side is light. I don't know. Who knows? But there's, there's no harm in just noticing that. Um, it's also interesting that the darkness is on his left side and the light is on the right side. So I don't know, just an interesting thought. Uh, thank you, Cheryl, for sharing that. And then I got two quotes, one from mm, Dralvord, D-R-A-L-V-O-R-D. <laughs> <clears throat> and then one from Missy Marianne from Drav Dralvord, uh, Seven Marvels. Did you see that? No, I didn't. And then Missy Mar Marianne, uh, Seven Marvels, as in a marvelous work and a wonder, question mark, Isaiah 29, 14. And then she also put DNC 4, 1. Now behold, a marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. I decided to uh, use the scripture citation index to look at, to look that up. Um, in, to my surprise, this is just a fun fact. I don't think it's necessarily significant to what we're talking about, but I looked up the word marvelous and it only shows up uh, in the Book of Mormon. And then let me scroll down. Uh, the Doctrine and Covenants. And then I guess once in the Pearl of Great Price in Joseph Smith history. So I, I did not expect that. I'm just, I'm just saying the word marvelous has, has only shown up in the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price, but I guess not in the, in the Bible. Um, <coughs> so anyway, let's go back here. Uh, so anyway, there, there are a number of uh, scriptures that you use the word marvelous. So who knows? But that's a, that's a good thought that she had. Um, so if we go to the post... <clears throat> I have them all, you know, color-coded so it's easy to see 
red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then gray. Uh, just remember that because that's going to come up in the next few things I'm going to show you. But you'll see, yeah, the word Marvel or Marveled shows up seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, this is something that he's been doing recently. And, and I, I don't know why. Uh, is there significance to it? Yeah, there could be for sure. Seven is a number of completion. You know, that's why the millennium is during the 7,000 years. This this Earth's history spans 7,000 years, and the 7,000 years is the last. You know, it ends, there's a little bit of time after that, but then after that, the Earth becomes a celestial world. And that's it for this Earth, 7,000 years. Um, and I think we're getting really close to entering that 7,000 years. So, anyway... <coughs> Uh, this isn't the only time that he's done it, uh, and you, you'll you probably know this if you've been watching my channel for a little while. So you have this most recent one, uh, just yesterday on New Year's Day, but let me show you a few other ones. Uh, the first time that I, I noticed him doing this was in his last general conference talk called Think Celestial, October 2023 general conference, uh, where he says, think celestial seven times in this paragraph. He says, when you're confronted with a dilemma, think celestial. When tested by temptation, think celestial. When life or loved ones let you down, think celestial. When someone dies prematurely, think celestial. When someone lingers with a devastating illness, think celestial. When the pressures of life crowd in upon you, think celestial. As you recover from an accident or injury, as I am doing now, think celestial. So, here, you can see the, well, I didn't do it quite right. I don't have the green on there because I left the original highlights there. I didn't use green. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times, think celestial. Uh, then we notice this again in the first presidency message for Christmas uh, where he uses the name of Jesus Christ seven times. <coughs> one of those times is Jehovah, but... What makes this part of a series of seven is that it's the name of Jesus, the actual name of Jesus Christ. One time, his pre-mortal name, the other the other times, his mortal name. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times, okay, in the Christmas message. And then uh, he did it again, uh, this time, uh, a social media post, December 3rd, 2023, my Christmas prayer for you. And uh, at first I thought that this was like an excerpt from his, uh, you know, Christmas devotional address, but it's not. Uh, it's just in for this social, this social media post. And in this one, uh, it's not the specific name of Jesus Christ. It's uh, just different titles. So the babe of Bethlehem. Okay. So I'll just read my Christmas prayer for you. Um, the babe of Bethlehem, the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior and our Redeemer. He is the Son of God, the Holy One of Israel. He is the Anointed One. And then he goes on uh, to the next paragraph. But in this paragraph, seven times that he says it. <coughs> so, and I want to say, I want to say that there have been others, but I, I wasn't taking note of them at the time. I didn't know that this was going to become a thing. But now I'm starting to see him do this, uh, especially within the, like I said, ever since the first that I know of uh, is October 2023. Um, and there have been patterns to uh, what he does. Uh, before we go on to that, let me just let you know, I, I, I created this new spreadsheet because now I guess I'm going to be... Uh, tracking this and going on scavenger hunts for sevens in his in his uh, messages and talks and stuff. But I have this new spreadsheet called Prophets, President Nelson's Sevens. Okay, so right now, as of right now, I have one, two, three, four different times that he's done this. October, November, December, January. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't know that until I just said that out loud. <coughs> he's done it 
every month so far uh, since October. That's kind of weird. So I would ask you if you remember of any other times that he's done this, could you please let me know? Ideally, uh, by email and and then put it in the subject line. Make sure that you're you uh, clarify that you're talking about this like pattern of sevens in the subject line. I wouldn't be surprised if there's other times uh, that he's done it. Now, look at this. And this is old news if you've been watching the channel for a while. But there's been patterns in his general conference talks. There have been patterns. Um, and they're intentional. And I'm not going to read the Sherry Do thing again, but we, th- there's reason to believe this. There's reason to believe this. Sherry Do, just look up uh, the talk called, um, it's a BYU devotional. It's called Prophet See Around Corners. She talked about the fact that when he did the hashtag give thanks uh, video message that he put out on social media, he wanted it done on a certain day at a certain time. And he even wanted the length of the video to be a certain length, uh, specifically 11 minutes. And he wanted it released at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. And it was the uh, month of November, the, which is the 11th month. And he wanted it done on a Friday. And all those things went against the conventional wisdom of, you know, when to post uh, things, you know, uh, his like, um, you know, specialists and social media and stuff like that. They would have advised against all those things. But what the way that it worked out is that video was like the most successful video uh, in terms of reaching the max number of people in the history of the church for like a single message like that. So <clears throat> uh, we've noted, for example, that he's mentioned the Salt Lake Temple in seven talks. Okay. Eight, if you count just like the first one where he talks about, you know, we're going to be, you know, renovating the Salt Lake Temple. But in these other talks, uh, he he uses the Salt Lake Temple as like a metaphor for us. And uh, it seems like he's using it as a metaphor for us getting ready for the second coming. So he did it like he did it every single conference uh, for seven conferences in a row, starting with the October 2018 general conference. And then the last time he did it was October 2021. But every conference for seven in a row. And then <coughs> there was um, there was this this kind of weird pattern right here, uh, the number of times that he spoke in general conference. So his first conference, he spoke five times. Next was four, and then three, and then back to four, and then back to five. And then after that, four, four, three, 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 two, one. But these first five conferences, you know, there's kind of like this mirror going on here where there's, it's like pointing toward the middle. And we went and found the middle talk. The middle talk is called Come Follow Me. He showed a picture of Paradise, California, which had been burnt down a city destroyed by fire, just like the earth is going to be, uh, you know, ravaged by fire, burning of some kind at the second coming. And then at the end of the talk, he said, time is running out. And he meant it. You can tell because when you watch the video, he leans into the microphone, you look at his facial expression, you listen to his tone of voice, you listen for the pause before he says that. He meant it. And it's the only time I'm telling you, I've searched high and low using the scripture citation index and relying on stuff that you guys have sent me looking through general. I've looked through general conference talks, journal of discourses, just all these different things. It's the only time that a prophet has just explicitly said that, that time is running out. So he, he does do things in patterns and, uh, I think it's pretty easy to understand if you just think about it just a little bit and you know a little bit about the significance of seven and stuff like that being completion. It's it's not hard to understand. Um so I'm just I'm just curious to know if he's done this other times and I just haven't picked up on that fact. So if if you know, 
if you know of some other time where he's repeated things seven times, uh, or you've, you know, seen, seen some other pattern, um, please let me know about it. Uh, there's also this kind of like interesting thing <clears throat> that we've noticed where, um, <clears throat> well, no, that, that's, that's a whole other thing. Never mind. Sorry. I might do a video about what I was just about to say in the future. I'm not going to go over it now. It's too much. Um, I think that's all I wanted to share in this one. Let me just double check. Oh, there was one other thing. Um, so the word Marvel, I wanted to see like how many times he's used that. So I searched Marvel. I, uh, my search parameters were just his talks in general conference, um, since he became a general authority and he, he's used the word Marvel in 11 talks. Okay. 11. And you can see here during his presidency, he's used it one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five different. Okay. Let me do it again. Sorry. I got tunnel vision for a second. One, two, three, four, five. So in five of his talks, okay, his five, okay, he is, he has said the word Marvel in five talks since he became president of the church. So, and then the, the his earliest use of, use of it was 1985. At that time, he was an apostle. So, Almost half of the times that he's used it has been during his time as president of the church. And it's similar for um, Marvelous, not Marvel, but Marvelous, where he's used it. So a total of 16 times, one, two, three, four, five, five times. So almost a third uh, of all his use of Marvelous has been during his his presidency. So he must view this time as he, he must be experiencing a lot of Marvel in marvelous things. And he says as much uh, in his Facebook post or his social media post on New Year's day. Um, <clears throat> one, there was one thing that stood out. This is kind of a tangent, but this just stuck out to me and I want to read this to you. So this is during the April, 2020 general conference that really important general conference that he referred to as a hinge point in the history of the church and that <laughs> it would not only be memorable, but it would be unforgettable. He said, the Book of Mormon chronicles the classic rise and fall of two major civilizations. Their history demonstrates how easy it is for a majority of the people to forget God, reject warnings of the Lord's prophets, and seek power, popularity, and pleasures of the flesh. Repeatedly, Past prophets have declared, quote, great and marvelous. There's that word, marvelous. Great and marvelous things unto the people which they did not believe, end quote. It is no different in our day. Through the years, great and marvelous things have been heard from dedicated pulpits across the earth. Yet, most people do not embrace these truths, either because they do not know where to look for them or because they are listening to those who do not have the whole truth, or because they have rejected truth in favor of worldly pursuits. The adversary is clever. For millennia, he has been making good, looking he's been making good look like evil, and evil look good. His messages tend to be loud, bold, and boastful. However, messages from our Heavenly Father is strikingly different. He communicates simply, quietly, and with such stunning plainness that we cannot misunderstand him. So it's just interesting. He's He says here that marvelous things have been spoken across dedicated pulpits across the earth, yet people don't accept it. And, uh, you know, we're no different, really, from the people of the Book of Mormon. The things are no different in our day. And uh, things are going to come to an end pretty soon for for those kind of people that reject the prophets and um, the gospel and Christ and so on and so forth at the time of the second coming. It's all going to come crashing down. So anyway, those are my 
<coughs> additional thoughts on this post in some of yours. <laughs> sorry. <coughs> in some of yours. Thank you to those who commented and pointed these things out. Um, and that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.